Good day, everyone, and welcome back to the Cyber Minutes podcast. My name is Max, and I'm joined by Flynn. So let's jump right into it. There was some really interesting stuff that's been happening recently in the cyber world, and also in just like the general world as well. There's some topics that have been brought up that are a bit sort of interesting, and um, we thought we'd cover a few of the things. Starting off, we'll talk about the Apex Legends hack. So first of all, I'll let Flynn talk a little bit about what Apex Legends is, and then we'll dive into what the cyber attack was. Yeah, so basically Apex Legends is a game owned by EA that is sort of notoriously has hackers on their games. Um, not a game I play personally, but a lot of has a very big competitive community. And yeah, as I said, notoriously has hackers in it. Basically, what happened over the past week or so was there's a big tournament going on. I'm not sure if they were sort of in the qualifying rounds or they're in the finals. I think, I think they actually it, may have been in the finals. Yeah, it was game three. So it was probably past the first few qualifying games and it was into one of the finals matches. Yeah, yeah. so basically what happened, I'd recommend looking up the video because it's actually kind of entertaining. <laughs> um, one of the uh, one of the players basically was gifted cheats mi- in the middle of the tournament. Um, you can see on the guy's face that he did not mean to have them. He basically could instantly see everyone through everyone through the walls, basically put his hands up in the air saying, like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, he was like, I don't know what's going on. I have hacks right now. Um, and basically the whole region had to be shut down, as far as I'm aware. Yeah. Um, what I think is really, really interesting is that this could have been a lot, lot worse than it was. This seems like it was sort of just a stunt to, I don't know, maybe someone was frustrated with Apex Legends or, um, I don't know, maybe it wasn't an internal person that basically just gifted this. That's yeah. very uh, speculatory. But it how it worked was rem- it was a remote code execution that people basically put onto the player's machines um, to give them the hacks. Now, remote code execution is basically the worst thing you can have uh, inside security because it means that you can completely compromise the system yeah you can run you can run your own code on a external system what that means is you can basically do whatever you want yeah it's typically how ransomware starts like they have some sort of payload that goes in they encrypt all the files or you know you can also completely take over a system yeah uh put spyware on it basically do whatever you want um and having cheats put on there Seems more like a stunt saying like, hey, I did this, blah, blah, blah. But realistically, if you could have had a remote code execution on there, you could have done anything you wanted. Exactly. Um, the, the thing as well is that remote code execution, uh, it's, you know, it's funny to put it on a, a big popular person's account and, you know, make him walk around with war sheets. But also, if we're saying that someone's able to put remote code execution sorry, able to perform remote code execution and mess with people's game files on their machines just in the in the in, in some server without even being on the server. It's also the same as saying, you know, they could have done this to every single person that plays Apex Legends in that region. Yeah. It, theoretically. Theoretically they could have put maybe a backdoor or a software with a dead timer or something on it. Maybe put that software on millions of people's computers and then all at once bang ransomware (laughs) every single person who's played apex legends in the last few weeks yeah and it's not like with you know gaming and competitive gaming is a big industry but it's not like everyone who plays it that's their full-time job like there's a lot of people that probably are struggling to make ends meet they have another job that yeah and they only have the one pc so they work on that pc and they also might you know play apex on there yeah um what could have been really scary, can you imagine if somebody used this as a tool to then get into a company system? Yeah. Yeah. What if someone's, you know, they've noticed that an employee, uh, I don't know, some company has been using their work computer to play Apex Legends and then, oh, there you go. I've put a backdoor in and I can now see all of their confidential files, you know, the, the communications going to and from that computer. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, you know, uh, gamers and streamers or whatever, a lot of their careers hinge on reputation. Yes. So if you were to put spyware on there and, you know, maybe they've said something that probably shouldn't be out there in the public, you could yeah. easily ransom someone to say oh, like, yeah. hey, give me 
some money to, you know, and I won't release these files. Yeah. They could have easily done that. Oh, 100%. So one thing I would say, it's red flags that if somebody's done this, it's very scary because who knows, they could do it again. Yeah. And also, I think it's a little bit like, oh, thank God that they didn't do more. Yeah. But also, that doesn't mean that they aren't currently doing more. And yeah. if this one person did, when I say it's a stunt, I assume it's somebody that, you know, probably watches Apex Legends, maybe even be a kid. Yeah, I was going to say it probably, it seems like it's a kid doing this, it, you know, a, a persistent uh, threat actor or someone with some level of, uh, you know, money motivation, like a, a state actor or something, they would have gone the opposite route. There's no way they would have just given someone one, you know, war hacks for a, a meme or a stunt. Right? Yeah. Um, well, the story is still sort of unfolding from what we know currently. It was basically, it could have either been the agent that was exploited or it could have been the easy cheat that they do um what is the anti-cheat easy yeah. anti-cheat yeah which is basically the anti-cheat that epic games use i i think um yeah a lot of, a lot of i think a lot of uh games use it but it's it's meant to be one of the best because it's a it's a kernel level anti-cheat meaning that it runs below the level of the the games running on your computer so if you think of anti-cheats this way an anti-cheat that runs on the same level as the game you can easily get past it if you run some code on your computer that operates underneath just the game running. So if you think of a game running on your computer like a pyramid, at the very top of the pyramid, there would be the game running. Then you go one layer down, there's the game code running. Then one layer down, there's you know your system, your operating system running. One layer down, you might have your you know the the motherboard talking to the RAM or whatever that going on. If you get one layer below the game code or the anti cheat running then you can run cheats on the system easy anti-cheat runs at kernel level meaning that it runs very very low down it's hard to get uh hard to cheat against it very difficult they've said that it wasn't their fault <laughs> pretty much easy anti-cheat said that there's they're confident that there's no issues on their system which makes us think that it's potentially a exploit available in the game itself yeah like, all the all the agent i suppose i'm not sure which one it uses is there a specific ea um agent that's used or is it run through i don't think it's run through steam Epic no, uh, no no it's not yeah. so it's probably yeah it's probably running something between your your actual machine and the game server or the whatever service they're running uh talking to there's probably some exploit in between that process happening um l r rather than something that's running off your computer interacting with the game files that's how normal cheats work is you have a bunch of code that you're running on your system interacting with the game files and that way you're getting cheats this looks like it's probably something to do with your game's communication with ea's services yeah that probably seems more likely. i suppose the other possibility is that so basically ea shut down the, the entire region that this was happening hey, so yeah. it was it wasn't just the one guy that this happened to the mm. clip that i'm talking about the viral one was um i can't remember what the guy's name was but um basically it wasn't the one person no. which if it was the one person we could say oh this person was exploited like maybe someone that had a vendetta against them yeah yeah just yeah. wanted to make a maybe they had a stunt maybe it was like a supply chain attack right he had some other yeah where that was vulnerable well that's what i was going to say potentially maybe there's in, in this region there's a third party software that's common like face it for example is a yep. common software it's not face it but face it's a common software that you know gamers use to make sure sure that um the competitive integrity of the game is kept i think it makes it so the servers run at a higher tick rate yeah so face it uh is a software that uh has their own anti-cheat built in so for games like counter-strike or Overwatch has just got it as well. Yeah, so Overwatch, most people are very angry with the developers that the anti-cheat, like we are saying before with the pyramid, the anti-cheat runs very high up, meaning it's easy to cheat in the game. So Face It and ESEA, both of these are like third-party uh, systems that have their own anti-cheat, have their own servers, which are much better than the, the regular game yeah. servers. But from our experience, they're pretty janky. The, the software kind of sucks. So... You know, like you're saying, it could be 100% true that most of these players that are on these tournaments are using, you know, Face It or some other software, which could be maybe exploitable. That yeah. could be the case. 
but you know, I, I would be more inclined to believe it's it's an issue inherent in Apex Legends. Yeah, I, I think so too, but it's hard to say yeah. right now what it is. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely worrying. And as we said, like it's kind of like a oh, it's a funny situation right now, but it could have been a lot worse. But oh, yeah. it could yeah. be a lot worse currently. Yeah. Um, yeah. because as we know, just because one person exploited in something doesn't mean that there's not other people that yeah. you know are being a bit more quiet. Yeah. Well, um, it seems experience. like it seems like um the developer uh, EA and um and what's the what's the game studio that's in charge of it? They made Titanfall as well. Oh, I can't remember what the can't remember the name. Yeah, but they they have seemed to have radio silence at the moment, so it it doesn't seem like they've released a patch or anything, um, which could yeah it could mean that the vulnerability is still uh, executable. It could be um, still even now even be exploited to a, a worse degree so i would say um you know I'd try and not play apex legends for a little bit if you can if you can help it try and stick to some other games maybe hellbivers too respawn um, respawn entertainment that's yeah. it yeah so yeah respawn have not said that there's a patch yet um I, i'd probably advise against playing any respawn games uh just for you know the time being while they're still sorting out what's going on because like we said what could happen is this is a common issue with the respawn titles or ea titles potentially they could be installing not cheat software on your computer but you know ransomware on your computer without you knowing and before you know it oh i oh know your you know your computer's bricked and you might have to pay them pay you know threat actors a sum of money imagine how much money they would have made exactly that's what i'm saying it could have been a lot lot worse and um that's millions of players. Do we think it's more likely that it's an? I, I'm pretty sure Apex has run on an EA agent, like you know Blizzard. Yeah, like their like DRM. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, from my instinct, it sounds like that would be more the issue mm. rather than the game itself. Okay. Um, but it's hard to say. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I just I find it strange that an entire region was shut down. Yeah. That makes me sound like it's. It's, an, it's potentially the agent because obviously in the agent you can change whichever region. I don't know how that region specifically would be affected. That'd be a very weird vulnerability. Yeah. But um, it's hard to say. But it could have been a lot worse and the story is still unfolding. Could be the um, configuration. Maybe the configuration of that region makes that exploit possible. Yeah, maybe it's just a server thing yeah. within those regions. Um, yeah, hard to say. It is hard to say. But yeah, it makes me think that there could have been Imagine how much money they would have made if they put ransomware on everyone's computers on that tournament. Yeah. If they put ransomware on, you know, everyone who's played in the last few weeks, like that's millions of computers. At least maybe even if it's 2% or 5% of people would pay, you know, $150 in Bitcoin, you know, out of a million players, they would have been filthy rich if they did that. Yeah. Which I, that that makes me think it's a kid or just like a, a hack. Yeah. yeah. I think it... The thing I think that would be, I suppose, kind of funny is that you could almost turn that into a little like part-time job for the time being. If you had access to all these pro players' things, as I said, you could blackmail ransom them. ransom individual yeah. things, blackmail them, say, you know, oh, I found this certain file or something that um, in the past has been drawn with gamers is pro players using cheats, but not in like tournaments where they're using them just to, like sort of test them out. Yeah. And, you know, just saying like, hey, I know that you use cheats, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to release it. Yeah. Um, unless you pay me, you know, even if it's just like 100, 200 bucks, you can do that for multiple people. You may get a pretty good side hustle, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. But we'll let you know when we see more developments in the story. As yeah. Max said, we haven't really seen any answers from uh, EA or Respawn. Yep. So, yeah, if we um, if we find out any more, maybe we could be completely wrong. That's always a, of course, always yep. a, a thing with uh, developing news, but um, we'll make sure to keep you in the know to understand you know, what happened here, make sure it you know, doesn't happen in the future type thing. Yeah, and it's, very, it's, it's sort of the first attack I've seen of this nature. Like never as like of course cheating is such a massive thing in um, gaming, mm. but I've never seen somebody being gifted cheats mid tournament. Oh, I've seen I've seen people being gifted cheats before, but not mid tournament. Yeah, yeah, very like that's very un uncommon. It's a ballsy move, really. Yeah, <laughs> like I've seen gifted cheats like in 
old Call of Duty lobbies <laughs> where they max out your level or whatever. But yeah, yeah. never like mid tournament giving you wall hacks. It's pretty crazy. No, no, definitely not. Cool. So we'll move on to this next topic, which Flynn has a bit of an understanding around in your sort of consulting gig. So take it away, Flynn. Yeah. So something I often see is people getting confused with the difference between vulnerability scanning and penetration testing. At a high level, vulnerability scanning is basically anyone can do this. I can basically run a vulnerability scan on Google's website and, yeah. you know, they may block me for, you know, too much traffic. But anyone can really do this and it basically will just give you a high level of the exploits you can see um, from the outside, which also will give you a lot of false positives. It'll give you a lot of vulnerabilities that are necessarily exploitable. So like a real common one that everyone has is uh, CSP, which is your content security policy is uh, either you know limited or it's not there, yep. which is something that if you go to a lot of different domains and you do this, you'll find it on like 90%. It, the point is though is that it's a very new vulnerability that scanners are picking up and it also isn't very exploitable mm. um, there's a couple of different examples of that as well but what I see a lot of the time is is penetration testing companies selling penetration testing and it's just vulnerability scanning uh, this was a problem I've seen a couple times where you know you offer organizations something like a like a gap analysis where You'll do a little vulnerability scan and then you'll also look at the documentation, etc. And something that they um, will say is, why is this like so expensive? We can go get a penetration test, which penetration tests are usually much, much more expensive. And they'll go, we can go get a penetration test for half the price, yeah. which is just wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what a lot of these companies are doing is either running vulnerability scans or even worse is that they're outsourcing this to you know a third party in mm. some other country that are just doing vulnerability scans for pennies, basically. Yeah. Um, I've actually wrote an article on this, so if you just kind of look up vulnerability scanning versus pen testing, um, there's an article I wrote on the Inconsult website if you guys want to check it out. But it's a big problem because, as I said, vulnerability scanning is the first thing you do if you're trying to exploit something. Mm. Um, yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean anything in terms of this is exploitable, and they, there's also things that it doesn't pick up that are right. um, that you know a hacker could exploit. Yeah, and being sold that at a ludicrous price, saying that it's penetration testing is just completely wrong. So if you're a company um, that's looking to get into cybersecurity, please do not do that. That's really really bad. And if you're a company that's looking to up their cybersecurity, that's maybe um, at the at the start of their cybersecurity journey. Yeah please read up on the difference between the two because it's something that's it's plagued the industry for quite a while and it yep. doesn't seem to be going anywhere. If anything, I've seen it a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and I guess, you know, one of them is just running a piece of software and just doing an automated checkup. It's like a health check, really. Yeah. Like writing a health check. And the other one is hiring a team of people to meticulously go through your systems and test every little thing, try and, you know, really rack their brain is to try and break into your software using any means necessary they're not really comparable at all and it to me it sounds like a scam really it, it, sounds, it, it is a scam is it it doesn't even sound illegal no it's definitely not legal you're literally paying for something that's not what you're getting yeah another big big thing with penetration testing as we said to Kerwin, is that the report is gold with penetration testing yeah. because they actually right. tell you you know what went wrong how they exploited it and potentially remediation as well yeah vulnerability scan won't do that at all it'll just give you a high level thing of what it is like a 30 word description yeah exactly like the common thing is oh hsts or whatever oh this is vulnerable to men in the middle attacks can right. you do that no probably not um and that's something that you will find everywhere on majority of websites and majority of time as i said is not exploitable mm. and it's going to pick up false positives and it's also not going to pick up certain um, vulnerabilities that are there and also to mention another big issue is that these or how i do is typically for like a website domain yeah which as we know is only a small picture yeah like there's a big difference between your external domain this being exploitable and you know further down within the actual systems yeah, yeah. that's a completely different vulnerability scan and also um that's not going to get picked up at all. Like a lot of people come back and say, 
hey, this vulnerability isn't exploitable. I say, well, yeah, that is, that may be the case because it's only based off of what the website could see. Yeah. Marketing that as a penetration testing is just plain wrong. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's, it's a scam really. And yeah. a- another aspect of it is if you're, um, if you're trying to look at your systems, maybe you might listen to this and go, oh shit, you know, maybe I have been, you know, being played around with this. Like Flynn said, the gold thing is look at your reports that you've been given and make sure that the reports are saying that, you know, they're detailing every step that went through and being really detailed on what the vulnerabilities are and going through, you know, yeah, like I said, each single step to give you a very big picture of how the vulnerability, you know, how it was found, how it's exploitable. That's what's going to tell you the difference between a, you know, a cheap vulnerability scan and an actual penetration test. You know, what, on one level, yeah, you're going to be given a, a crappy description. It's not going to, it's going to be vague. It might, might not even be correct that you're looking at. Whereas, you know, if you know that you're getting penetration testing properly, if you're given a, you know, really good report, a, a really nicely formatted, uh, you know, report that's easy to read and it's going to go into a lot of depth, that that's, you know, that's the difference you're going to see. Yeah. So a big disaster that happened um, over the past week was the Baltimore Bridge incident. Basically, a, a ship lost power from what we know. Yep. Um, I've also heard some people say it was just an operator error. But it basically drove into a pylon, completely um, destroyed the bridge. I'm, as far as I'm aware, there was a couple of deaths as well. Yeah, well, I think under 10 deaths. I think, I want to say five, but I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, it, it'll change because I think they're still looking for survivors. Yeah. So um, there were people who died. Yeah, yeah. it was pretty, pretty, pretty bad. Um, the reason why we wanted to talk about this is that there's a lot of people, supposed site security experts as well. I saw this take on a LinkedIn group, which um, apart from the Cyber Minutes LinkedIn group, for some reason, <laughs> I find a lot of LinkedIn groups to be complete crap. It's just yeah. people posting on it that seem to not know what they're talking about. Yeah. Um, but anyway, they basically posted something saying like, oh, the Baltimore um, incident has clear indications that it could be a cyber attack. There is no indication. Like, it could very well be a cyber attack, but there's no indication that that is the case. From everything we know, it's a... It, it seems that there was just a power outage and, a, and an operator incident. There's no indication that this could have been a cyber attack at this point. And to say that is fear-mongering yeah. and also just completely false. Yeah. And this is something we've seen a couple times. Like with There was a short Telstra outage and even the Optus outage that wasn't a cyber attack. It was the router stuff. Is People all quickly jumped into the gun. Oh, it's a cyber attack. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, no, I totally agree. I think... It is, it is female green is what it is. And if you look at the video of the, of the ship crashing into the bridge, you see the, the power cycles a couple of times, which is more indicative of, yeah, just a, you know, a power failure or an operator failure, something going on that, you know, could be a, just a instance of human error. There's no indication that it's cyber attack. No. Like it would be such a strange cyber attack to do as well. If you use some critical thinking and you go, okay, well, if someone wanted to cause a big stir and, you know, maybe make the systems go out in a ship and cause it to crash into something, you know, why wouldn't they just go onto the ship and, you know, shoot the people and then steer the ship into a into a thing and then run away? Cyber attack just doesn't really make sense. And how are you going to cyber attack the, the, you know, controls of a, a big ship? Yeah, like the, to do it, you'd have to be an extremely advanced threat actor. We're talking like Stuxnet level, yeah. where you're attacking SCADA software that, well, it should be air gapped from any um, external systems. It shouldn't have any access to the internet whatsoever. Yeah. Of course, we're making an assumption there. Yeah, well, but you're not gonna you're not gonna run your controls of your ship on like in, the Bluetooth. <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna Bluetooth your, your ship's controls, right? Yeah. So we're saying that if it was a cyber attack, you'd need to be on the ship, presumably most likely to tap into the systems you, you know you might need to install it like literally install a usb hack the mainframe type thing very sophisticated attack to be able to pull it off you, you know you'd have to do something like that if you're going to go to that extent why wouldn't you just shoot the people on the ship yeah no. 
do it yourself. It's it's completely ludicrous to jump to to say something like oh there's indications that this could be a cyber attack and as we said it's just fear-mongering and it doesn't help anyone no it just spreads um misinformation and yeah yes it's it's worth probably saying that you know and yeah another outlook is you might say while this was a clearly not a cyber attack something like this could happen in the future yes you could you know that's uh, there's you can be critical about it and say something like or, or you could even say, like, this is something that could happen, but there's no indication that this is yet. Yeah, that's um, a lot th- more constructive. Yeah, but and but to say, you know, oh, this is a cyber attack, jumping the gun from a cybersecurity professional is yeah. um, ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. And we're not going to call out anyone, obviously. But, you know, don't, don't spread misinformation. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> not, not useful to anyone. And, you know, I, I, w- I would like to say as well that, you know, in the future, the way things are going, if we try and put AI into everything, imagine an AI controlled, you know, ship system, you know, it's totally possible that something like this could happen in the future. But, you know, there's no indication today that that's a cyber attack. No. No. Thanks for listening. Just a reminder that the Cyber Minutes podcast is for educational purposes only. The views expressed by hosts and guests are their own, not necessarily their employers. Advice discussed is general advice. We promote ethical discussions, not illegal activities. Have a cybersecurity question? Send an email to cyberminutespodcast at gmail.com as we'd love to answer it. Stay cyber safe.